was it back in 2011 we did that video the holy ghost is the revealer yes I remember I, I talked about the cat how i saw my cat dancer and it looked like he said to me you know i'm gonna die soon that whole story yeah. if you can repost that video i don't want to go into it right now right right i'll join so, you on that part yeah i know i've had a gift and um it's changing now because wow i would see like spirits come into somebody's face and wow. another story i'm not gonna go into detail but mm -hmm. um i was talking to someone about them smoking weed and how they need to stop and he was saying to me well there's nothing wrong with smoking Weed is natural. God made it. It grows in the earth. And um, as he's saying this, his face changed into this nasty, demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I wear glasses and I took my glasses off because I, I was like, maybe it's the glasses. And I'm looking and it's still there. And it was so ugly. The physicality of it was ugly, but more grand than that, the spirit. It was so ugly that I couldn't look at it. And right. um, I remember saying to the individual, I don't know why he was laying across my bed. And I, I just said, stand up. And when right. the individual stood up, he said to me, and I don't have horns either. And then it wow. disappeared out of his face. It knew you saw it. Yeah. And wow. so something happened to me approximately two years ago. It was mm -hmm. September of 2022. Right. I'm at my job. It's a Sunday night. And I had asked, don't be like, get off at 11, 15 or something. And I asked if I can leave early. And my supervisor said, yeah, but the rec room needs to be cleaned up. I said, yeah, I'll clean up the rec room. So I cleaned up the rec room. And so when you come on the unit, you first enter the rec room. If you walk straight through, there's another door that leads to a, a, a small vestibule. But in that vestibule is the bathroom where the girls take showers and things like that. And so I noticed the bathroom wasn't cleaned. So I went ahead and cleaned the bathroom. And right when you open the door to the right on the floor is a pile of towels that they use after they take their showers, right? So I'm in this small vestibule area. Once you walk through the vestibule, there's another door that takes you on to the unit where their rooms are. So again, I'm in this vestibule area and I'm standing outside the bathroom door bending over, picking up all these towels and putting them into a, a sack. And I sense a presence. And I sense a male presence standing behind me. And I'm saying to myself, there's a male on the unit. And only time males come on the unit if there's a call for additional staff, if there's a situation going on with the girls. And you know, I have a radio on me. And I was right. like, I didn't hear additional staff call, but there's a man standing behind me. He must be new staff. He's probably standing there um, wanting to ask me a question. Now, Madam Whitbass is getting old. I can't keep bending over up and down so much. So I said, well, you know what? I'm gonna finish putting these towels in this sack and I'll stand up and see what he wants. So. I'm having this, what I just said, I'm having that conversation with myself as I'm putting towels into the sack. So I put the last bit of towels in the sack and out of my peripheral vision on my right side, I see a man dressed in black. He just stepped to the right. Now, all of this is happening as I'm standing up from bending over and turning around to my right towards him to see, you know, what he needed. And as I was doing that, I saw him step to the right. But by the time I turned all the way around, 
Nobody was there. Wow. I stood there for several moments freaking out. Like, I know there was a man standing behind me. I, I could see him vaguely out of the corner of my eye. There was somebody standing behind me. And I'm just really confused. Like, what? and then finally I was like, look, uh, girl, you bugging. And I just went on and finished the bath and whatever and left. Right. Two weeks later, I'm at my other job. And it's around the same time, a little bit after the nine o'clock hour. All right. I'm sitting in this small parking lot at my job. When I say small, it probably holds about 10 cars. I'm sitting in my car. I got both the driver's and the passenger's uh, side windows down halfway. Now, at 9 o'clock, nobody, meaning individuals, should be out of the building. So it's a little bit after nine. I see a, a white guy. He's about 23. He's dressed in brown slacks, dressed really nice. And he has on a brown dress shirt. The cuffs were turned up. And the brown dress shirt he was wearing had like splotches of uh, cream color all over the shirt. Um, and he was walking diagonally away from my car on the passenger side. He was walking with his left hand in his pocket and he walked in his right hand swung back and forth. So I start to say, Hey, you're not supposed to be out here. I say, Hey, and I stopped because he just disappeared. I stand up out of my car and I look around this very small parking lot. Nobody's there. So I sit back down in my car and I'm like, all right, Madam Whipass, you're taking medication for high blood pressure. So I Google side effects because I'm thinking, hey, maybe I'm hallucinating. Uh, that's no side effect to the one medication that I take. And it's a real right. small um, dosage amount. And right. I realized this just happened to me two weeks ago. You feel a presence and then you see something. Now, the first guy dressed in black, um, you know, he was standing behind me for several, several moments. The white guy, the second one, I don't know if he saw me. He was walking like he was going someplace and he knew where he was going because he takes his walk all the time. And it just tripped me out. And I can imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, understand I do not get high, I do not drink. I don't have any psychological or mental health issues. I do not. I know. I can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's something that I shouldn't tell a lot of people because, you know, people start thinking, you know, so, oh, she kind of crazy. But I know what I saw. Don't and worry so about that. Though. I decided to have fun with this and I started talking to a lot of people that I knew and told them my experience. And the responses I got were so hilarious to me. Um really? some people were supportive. Um I told um one of my supervisors in the mental health field and she low key was assessing me to see if I was uh, dealing with schizophrenia or something. Cause she asked me, <laughs> um, do you think you are involved or you have called to be involved in spiritual warfare? That's an assessment question. 
And I was like, no, I'm just telling you my experience. Um, the first job with the guy dressed in black, I went to a supervisor who had been working there at the time at least 15 years. I told her, and you know what she said to me? Actually, what? wait, wait, wait. Maybe about four years prior to me seeing that black guy, I saw a little girl there. Um, she was about nine years old. Nine, 10, 11 in that age. And she had on a white dress and the the edges of the dress, like around the collar, around the cuffs, down the sides, and the hem was like a, a stripe colored cornflower blue. And I saw her floating. She didn't walk. She kind of floated. And wow. um, that was the first time I've seen a spirit in this form now. But I dismissed that. But I told my supervisor about the little girl. You know what she said to me? She said, you ain't the first, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and probably not the sixth person who told me about this little girl over there in that unit. Oh, my God. That's what she said to me. Um, I called my cousin because when was this? This had to be like 2000 or something, or in the 90s. She had came up to New York, well, all of them, whatever. And we were all talking, and um, she said she's just like that little boy in that movie, The Sixth Sense. She said that's real. She said she remembers when she was three years old, she was um, seeing people and she still sees them today so she told me the story she had this house in florida and i remember this house she said i think it was a portal because people would walk they would come like through a wall in my bedroom walk through my bedroom and through the house and she said it would happen quite often and she said one night she was laying in her bed and this woman came walking through the same path that they walked through and she got to her bedroom door like she was going to walk out, but she stopped and turned around. She said, the lady came over to me, took her two fingers and placed it on my neck and took my pulse. So I said, was she checking to see if you were alive or something? She said, no, I just think she was a nurse. And she stood there for a couple of minutes, took my pulse and turned around and oh, went wow. on about a business. And walked out. I said, what did you do? She said, I just turned over and went to sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep? Look, yeah. the stories alone, the stories alone you telling me got me cutting lights <laughs> on cutting lights on up this bad boy. <laughs> For real? <laughs> <laughs> now you know, yeah. I'll reveal that Mr. Scurve is traveling. And I'm in this three-story house by myself up on a mountain in the country. So, <laughs> and I just had to go downstairs. Uh, this this top, the top floor bathroom is not finished. So when I go to the bathroom, I have to go downstairs and that big behind floor with that high ceiling. And and uh, oh god, no, keep going. This is good. <laughs> I just know that I'm not going to go to bed until the sun comes up. Yeah, but my cousin, <laughs> she was born with a veil over her eyes. Mm -hmm. And she sees them all the time and, you know, she's used to it. Her first experience, she said she was three and mm -hmm. my aunt was doing her hair. And she said she looked at the window and there was a lady that she said it was like a, like you watch a piece of a video and you play it back and watch the same part again. She said it was something like this. The lady kept jumping out the window and coming back, looking at her and jumping out the window and coming back, looking at her and jumping out the window. And she okay. said at three years old, she said to my aunt, who's that lady that keeps jumping out the window? <laughs> and she said, my aunt looked and didn't see anything. And then my aunt said, that must be uh, Pauline. 
Pauline was my other aunt who mm -hmm. was thrown out of a window in the oh, 50s. Wow. Yeah. So my cousin, she sees. And right. she's always seen them in that form. I'm just now starting to see in that form. And I'm like, okay, what is the purpose of this? Because now I got questions. The guy, the second guy I saw, the white kid, right. he was dressed very nice. He didn't just walk out the grave and start walking out the earth. You want to know how I know? Because I grew up mm -hmm. in the funeral business. If he walked right. out the grave, his clothes would have been cut up the back. And they were wow. not. So he didn't just come out the grave. So where do you get these nice clothes from? Do they have like Bloomingdale's on the other side or what? <laughs> I want to know. I got questions. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, maybe, well, I mean, you know, when you hear um, person reminded me the other day, he said, yeah, you know, in the afterlife, you're going to be in your best form. Because he was referring to me being a former bodybuilder. He said, boy, you're going to have a heck of a form when you come, when you go into the afterlife. He was speaking in general. He's a Muslim. And so I'm thinking, like, maybe he, this person was in his best form. Maybe it won't be a manifestation of how he was in a funeral home, just listen to what you were saying, because maybe he passed away and didn't re really realize it. I mean, you know, you don't have to really, I mean, if you die old and your body's all messed up, that's not your best form or whatever you think of yourself, who knows? Um, but, you know, I, I've had experiences like that. I ain't trying to play, can you top this? But I remember, I don't know if I told you, you might remember this guy, he was at one of my parties one of those adult parties and his breath was the breath from hell and mm. people were complaining and it was not normal. It wasn't just that he ate something bad or had morning breath at night. <laughs> this guy had a bit to me. I already knew that it was a spiritual problem. The guy seemed to be an okay guy. And, um, Somebody was like, listen, let him know that he has to do something with that breath. They took it as a physical thing. And I knew it wasn't. So mouthwash and all that stuff was not going to take care of it. But I, I went anyway to say that to him. I said, brother, you know, that was very diplomatic. I wasn't trying to hurt the guy's feelings. And I tried to make him feel not bad. I said, man, maybe you had something bad to eat or whatever. And we don't really smell our own breath. But, you know, you're talking to these young ladies and stuff, and they're kind of coming to me. Not a lot of them. And it was a lot, but I said it that way. He said, no problem. So I gave him something to take care of. And it came back. It was like even worse. So I'm talking to him, trying to change the subject so he didn't feel so bad. And I didn't even look away. I kind of looked to the side. But as I put my full focus back on him, he looked just like that gnashing teeth thing from Hellraiser. I don't know if you remember the movie Hellraiser from back in the 80s. His mm -hmm. teeth, his face, his face actually got a little longer. Like, not a full length of a face, but like half of it. It just got long. His teeth were long and gnashing, looking at me talking. Mm. And the eyes were so evil. And it had a little glow to it. It was definitely demonic. And that confirmed that. I didn't say nothing to him, but I, I gasped. The people around me and everything, I was like, <gasps> I knew I was the only one seeing that. And I knew what it was. Now, I don't have these abilities that you have, and I don't think I want them, but there have been several times when I've seen things. And you know, me and Carlos saw that thing walking down the street. Mm -hmm. um, he, he freaked out. I, I freaked out and it was gone. About eight feet tall. Looked like it was flaming. But the flames were contained in, within the outline of the silhouette. And it walked forward, but each step, it floated across like that flat you know the elevator in Atlanta they have in the airport where you can just walk across, but it's not yeah. an es escalator, but it's flat. Yeah. It's like yeah. That. when you walk slowly on that, you move faster. It just looks like you're moonwalking forward. And we were heading down toward that end of the block, driving six car lengths away from the mm -hmm. corner. Went from the right to the left. There was no place it could have went because the back of that warehouse didn't have any windows or doors. And there's another warehouse across the street. We knew we saw something at that point. And there's other things that have happened, you know, um, 
but I don't have your gift. And again, I do not want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. I take my hat off to you, but that is something that I, Look, but you know I don't mind it if yeah. you know I knew what its purpose was. And my I don't just don't want to be seeing these things just to be seeing them. <laughs> I got I questions. Like, yeah. you know, do you date? What do you do all day? You know, what happened to you? How'd you get here? Do you have to stay here? How long you been here? You know, I got questions. Right, I don't think it has a day like, well, you know, it's around, around 12 o'clock ghost time right now. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I, I, I got questions. Could be. You never know. Mm -hmm. You know, how long were you, are, were you here in this state? What happened to you? Do you go do to different countries? In the state? Do they know they're in the state? And when they see you, do they think you're something to be frightened of? Like, like, like how does this work? You know, what, what is it aware of? You know? Hmm. Because yeah. it's definitely and weird because I know people who have things happen to them like that. You know, and it's not super common. And remember, the people who it happens to will not always open their mouth because they don't know how receptive a person is going to be to hearing that. You know, and, and I do believe that there are many people who are in a mental institution because they couldn't handle seeing that and relating to that. You know, or is it the majority of people that have that gift have that sense of awareness to know that this is part of a natural order and, and it's getting more and more intense? That's the one thing you said that you're getting it better. So I'll have questions for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, I don't know what, what it is. I, I wish I did. Um, I don't know why I'm seeing things in a different form now. Right. And it's not like I've been really fasting and praying and, you know, I haven't been doing any of that. And I'm never afraid. They don't scare me. They Speak piss me yourself. off. Anything, <laughs> if anything. Because I'm like, you know, for what? What did I see you for? What's the purpose of me seeing you and you just step to the right and disappear? What's the purpose of me seeing you and I say something to you and you just disappear? And mm. can you give me the lottery numbers? <laughs> Since you're on I got this questions. <laughs> yeah, I got questions. <laughs> You know, what goes on in your realm where you're at? Like, there's, 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 tell me from soup to nuts how your day goes. Do you sleep? Do you eat? How do you travel? Can you just think and be someplace? <laughs> do you just like walk through a bus and take a seat? Do you just walk on the airplane and just stand around? move out the way from time to time when you have to, you know, do you just stay here in this area? Do you go to other countries? Do you think you want to be in Morocco and in a, in a split second, you're in Morocco? Quantum I got travel. questions. <laughs> oh, man. And I best. mean, is there <laughs> another life after this life you're in? Like, you know, are you just in this state for a spell, do you get another Is life and come back in the form that I'm in or that you once had? Yeah, I got questions. Right. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. And do you know if people went someplace else in your dimension? That ain't good. Right. Are you in limbo? And how come I can see you? And you, Mr. Guy in the black, the fuck you stand behind me all that time? And when I turn around to see what you want, you just gonna step off. Why? <laughs> I have a theory. <laughs> what? He was, he was ogling your hourglass shape but realized he was a ghost and couldn't do nothing. He wouldn't touch him. 
<laughs> Lord, better we're, we're past to make a ghost horny. No, I hope not. That's what you're trying to. People get raped by ghosts and they're Oh, sleeping. no. That's yeah, not good. what is it? They suck you buses and all that stuff. I don't want incubus, that shit happening. Right. The women get the incubus because it goes in you, and the guys <laughs> get the succubus. Because mm-hmm. it sucks them. Unless it's a gay uh, incubus hitting off a man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that got to be the worst. I want nothing like that to come visit me. I'll be kicking some ghost yeah. ass that night. <laughs> now, you know, I'm going to miss my exit chatting with you again. But it's okay. <laughs> but, um, That's because the conversations are classic and good. Yeah, and I just got I just got questions. You know, I'm, I've been asking God why, what was the point? You know, and maybe it just has to be a process like this to prepare me for something else because this just can't be the end of it. Oh, another person I told, I called my very, very best friend. Now, get this I told her everything I just told you, and she just she didn't interrupt me, she just listened intently. And when I finished, She said, you know, over the past year, I've had that same experience about four times. She said, what resonated with me when you said you feel a presence and then you see someone out of the corner of your eye? She said, I was in my kitchen and I am the only woman in the house. It's just, you know, me and Tony. You know, the kids are grown, grown they have moved out. She said, I was cooking in the kitchen. And she said, all of a sudden, I felt a presence, like I wasn't alone. And I was the only one in the house. And she said, I looked towards the dining room She said, I saw a woman wearing a peach colored pantsuit outfit and she had on a peach colored hat and she walked out of my dining room into the hallway. She said, I've never told anybody this except you. She said, I didn't even tell Tony because if I told Tony, he probably would say something like, you need to stop drinking wine on the weekends or some shit like that. But um, she said, I've had that experience. So it's not just me. Um, mm. um, um, and then a couple other noises? people. Why am I hearing noises? The, the doors make funny noise when the winds blow, but still, it's like. Well, you <laughs> it's know, like <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, a couple of other people I told. Um, who was spiritual minded right. and they don't know each other but they both said you know this is something you, this is a conversation you just can't have with everybody and right. I was like you know what and I don't really care what people think because I know right. what I saw Right. I know I don't have any mental illness it's not that little five milligrams of the Cinepril that I'm taking. It has no uh, hallucinogenic side effect right. or anything. But I just find it interesting and I just want to see people's reactions and hear people's opinions and perhaps their experiences. Right. Well, maybe when we get this up, there'll be comments and, and different things and you know, they just set a little time to do a conference with other people who have the experience like that. Even if they want to do it anonymously, they don't have to say who they are. But there, there are a lot of people, I'm assuming, that, that have less intense and more intense situations. And how do they handle it? I told you yeah, about... And maybe somebody could tell me, you know, why I'm seeing this and what should I do if I should have that idea. experience again? Because I'm not afraid. 
they don't scare me. They just piss me off. <laughs> that's funny. Because I just see them and that's it. You know, most people get scared. You're like, I'm getting pissed off. You're a true <laughs> man with ass. For real. <laughs> that whip is not just a physical one. It's a spiritual whip. For real. <laughs> yeah, it just pisses me off. Because what's the purpose? What is the point? You don't give me the number to play. Nothing. I just see you and that's it. <laughs> you know, you don't give me a message. Nothing. I just see you and that's right. it. <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. This makes my, it makes no sense to me. That's amazing, though. And you're so level-headed about it. And, and I have to say, remember, when I was at your house and I was hanging the ceiling fan, and, and we're very yes. unconventional. Yes. And, and, you know, I think like three in the that. morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know that I stopped hosting uh, those decadent parties and I refused to go back into that lifestyle. Um, because Madam Whippass got you out of it, right? Yes, yes, I got to give her credit. Madam Whip has got me out of it. She came and set the captain free. For him. <laughs> and, oh, I don't forget. Oh, I don't forget. I don't forget. But, yeah, I'm over you. And you remember this. Mm -hmm. I had, was so determined to cut these people off and cut these women off that I changed my home number. And the beeper I had, as ancient as that sounds, because we, we used beepers back then, there were cell phones. No cell phones. Well, there were yeah. cell phones, but we couldn't afford them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or we wouldn't right. be able to afford them. But, Those um, were the big block phone, uh, cell phones at the time, like a brick. Yeah, like a big shoebox on the side of your head, right? So yeah. I'm up talking with you. I had just got this beeper. This was a Friday night. I remember this. And I just got to be put early that day and I changed my number early that day. How is it that my beeper went off? And I figured, well, maybe somebody else had that number. And then when I looked in the beeper, it was my home number. And I showed it to you, my brand new home number, mm -hmm. who I didn't give anybody. And because I was already, the number didn't change over until, like, I called you with the old number. And I, oh, okay, I'm coming over. And it changed over. It was early when it changed over. So even you didn't have it yet. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you, you were right there. You didn't pick up a phone and beat me with my old, my, my new number that you didn't have yet. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go back home. That spooked me out. Mm -hmm. Because remember, my mother was in the hospital. Nobody was home. Yep. And I'll tell you one thing. The feelings that I had at home at that time, around that time period, I was afraid to go into certain rooms. I'm sweating. A cold sweat. I, I felt the presence of something so strong. And that's what I do. I mean, I don't purposely do it, but I feel things. Not necessarily mm -hmm. by myself and feel things in the house, but that time I did. Because you know I was living wild. And yeah, man, what bad saved me from that. But yeah, portals. And this is, this is the thing. Remember, we sold it. I sold the place to this Indian couple. And that was uh, April 5th, 2001, when we closed. And they were so happy to get the house. They loved it, how I fixed it up, everything. I don't know what happened, but by August, they sold the house and got out of there. Wow. I don't know what they were seeing. I don't know what. And I have a feeling that's what it was because there were so many women that were coming through that place and things that we were doing. And I'm not going to get graphic on this one, but you can figure it out. That it's like I burned a portal in that place because I would have people that came over, like people to check the meters or something. And I remember one woman came over, black woman, and she was outspoken. As soon as she hit the door, she, ooh. I like the way you look in here. I just makes me feel like I want to take off my clothes. Even though that was unprofessional, like that's the kind she of She just couldn't um, help herself. She couldn't help herself. That's the kind of response that, you know, she, she gave because what she felt. You know? 
Peace. Well, keep talking because I got to jump out the car. Okay. But there is more to this life. And I'm walking around now. You can hear it all echoing in this big hallway. There's more to this life than meets the eye. And I know that for sure. And I can go on. See, I can go with some experiences that I know, but they're just, they're just, they're not like yours. But as a novice in this thing, I know what you're saying to be the truth. Even though we all have different experiences, you know, but it is, um, it's amazing, but it's something that I don't want to explore. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me just say this. If you hear me yeah. moaning and groaning, it's because right. I got a sciatic nerve down my left leg that's killing me. And I'm trying Oh, to I had that, you know. You yeah, gotta get to a chiropractor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's but talking. um yeah. And I can only imagine those who can't cope with that gift. But I don't think that you'd have that ability given to you and you're not ready for it and maybe you're given this thing incrementally because i started to say earlier and i forgot and i'm gonna remember it again there was a church <clears throat> storefront church around the corner that my mother would sometimes get up and go to and i remember she sung a lot she sung at weddings and funerals and she was much in demand you know she graduated from juilliard a, a, a school of music so she had a phenomenal operatic voice. So she she was in demand for that. So it was hard for her to really stay down in one church every Sunday. But she was a modified Christian, I'd say. It wasn't like she was somebody staunch and rigid. She was aware of the world of spirituality. It wasn't just rigid. And she taught me a lot of things. And so I would go with her sometime because there was this... There was this young lady who I, 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 she was such a pretty young lady <laughs> and I had a crush on her. So I always would go and I'm not lying. I would go really to see her and she's quiet. She, we, we didn't really talk, but I just love looking at her. Right. And so I'm there and everything. And so we got to know the people that were there. And there was one lady named sister Audrey and she had a couple of kids, no husband, and she was just a very serious looking person. She had these big eyes. And she would kind of look at you sometime. Like peripheral vision. Like, but you see her like looking straight, but she's bending her eyes looking at you, right? She never looked at me that much. One of those little younger guys, about 10, 11, 12 years old. But come to find out from Sister Audrey talking to my mother. And I wasn't there listening, but my mother would like sometimes tell one of her friends or whatever. And it wasn't like she was selling her business, but that she had this gift of discernment and the gift of seeing. <clears throat> so I had some situations where, you know, she's a neighborhood person and I would see her walking down the street and I would see her before she saw me. Lots of times, you know, being younger, you darting around the corner, you walking here, walking there. And so I would see her look up like you're looking across the street to the second or third floor building, but there was no building there. Why, why are you looking up? And then she'd stop abruptly, not in a way where you'd say to yourself, this woman's crazy, but she would stop abruptly and maybe just abruptly just cross the street. But I remember one time when I was on Parsons Boulevard between uh, below Hillside oh. Avenue, there was ah. a, McDonald's there and probably still there too and I was in there and I had ordered some food Shit. and I had got well I hear you sweetheart I know it's, and I, I know the pain I had the oh. same exact thing that my left leg okay I got but, 15 minutes yeah so yeah ordered some pizza. oh okay <sighs> but I want to say on that note you got to get to a sports chiropractor who's going to give adjustments, not some quack that's going to rub cream on you. Because I had the same thing in, no, in 1984. No, no, no. I had it for the first time a couple of years ago. And I went to a chiropractor and I was supposed to do 15 sessions. And after seven session, I was fine. And it just started today, this morning. And so I also, made an appointment. It could, yeah. But my it could appointment also be is not until next Thursday. 
It could also be dietary along with the physical problem too, that way inflame it. I found that out too. But we'll talk about that in a little time. I just want to finish up on this. I was yeah. um in the McDonald's, I sat down and ate. I was eating. I was almost done. Maybe I had three more handfuls, not handfuls, but fingerfuls of fries to eat, Big Mac and all that stuff. You know, I was, I was young. I was eating that stuff too. Even I started training, right? But Sister mm -hmm. Audrey walked in by herself. Sister and she who? got in line. Sister Audrey, the woman who. Oh, has I thought the ability you said Sister. Eat. I thought you said Sister Orgy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> well, that was may have been a Freudian slip from the kind of young ladies they used to hang out with before, right? <laughs> no, I don't want to know nobody like mm. that no more. <laughs> but um, she was standing there and she started looking around. It was not packed. It was not empty. It was in the middle. But people began to file in, and they were younger guys, not teenagers, but younger guys, like 22, 23, and they looked kind of rough. But it wasn't that that made her look around funny because she starts looking around up toward the ceiling, rolling her eyes like, like some, something made her jump, and she's looking this way and that way. And then she started pleading the blood of Jesus, all right. Oh, Jesus, I got to get out of here. Please get me out of here in time. Now, I knew her abilities. So I got the heck on up out of there, too. And as soon as I got up out of there, maybe got like one doorway away, like next door. And the next, all of a sudden, some guy gets shoved out the door. The glass breaks. is fighting, screaming. No gunshots, but it's the kind of scenario that you expected gunshots, too. And people emptied out. Maybe somebody flashed a gun and they, the way they emptied out, it was like there was about to be some gunplay. Everybody emptied out of there. I'm glad I got out. But this thing, she saw it happening before it happened. And she saw the entities that were around. I saw this with my own eyes as far as her reaction. And I knew, you know, I knew this thing. And it was just, it let me know that there's more to this life than beats the eye. You know, in crowds, crowds. I've walked through Times Square, Manhattan at night by myself. I used to love to do that. Out there two or three in the morning walking around. I was never fearful of anything, but there'll be people who kind of look strange. <laughs> you turn around, they're gone. You see, and there's people in the street. Mm -hmm. You know, like little things that tease your brain. But the major stuff where you seeing people with one hand in their pocket, like they're going somewhere dressed up and, <laughs> you know, no, nothing like that. But there was one night, I'm going to tell you, I was over by your place with you. And we were doing something uh, with, with, with the balcony. What we were doing, we were putting something, was it Christmas lights or something or something? But we were sitting out there on the balcony. Uh -huh. And you looked at me. I never told you this. But your eyes glowed. And you, you stayed looking at me for a split second. You didn't realize this. It was about 15 seconds you stared at me. It was like you were looking straight through my soul. And then you went on with the conversation. I was like, what the heck was that? It kind of startled me. Because we were outside on the balcony. You were sitting down. I was sitting down. The we front were, I was or the back you. one? I think the front one. The front one. I know. I know the, it was the front one. Because the street and everything, mm -hmm. you know. And it, it was a powerful look. So it wasn't directed toward me like you're some spooky person or whatever. But I caught your gaze. And you were gone for a second, like a couple seconds, but you were just looking at me and you froze in a natural position. You were just sitting there and you're staring at me. But your eyes, they, it's like they glowed. I'm not saying glow with a light that you could see like it's lighting up the room, but it was a spiritual glow. I would say that. But you definitely have something going on with you. I don't mean that in a bad way. When you, oh, you got something going on with you. I mean like, you got some powerful thing going on there. 
Well, why not? You're better with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, you do. You do. And I'll say it this way. You have the ability to stop a lot of things from happening in its tracks. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> You're a powerful oh, woman. <laughs> I knew that from day one. <laughs> mm. Wow. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. You know, you got me singing that sometime. <laughs> if, if I, I die, die, I die. I die. <laughs> Imagine the slaves doing the uprising saying that to the white folks. If I die, I die. Man, you make them throw that whip down and run. <laughs> I love that. That song reminds me of you so much. And anytime I like, I, I'll, I'll see it playing on YouTube or something, or whatever. It, it doesn't. I've never heard it the way like when you really say it out of just from silence. <laughs> we got a video with you saying it like that, and I've been going around for years singing that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With, 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 with my back slidden behind. Sitting there walking past the church saying that, and some some lady, praise him, brother. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Madam Whip Ass. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so <clears throat> I guess we can transition to talk about uh Diddy. You know what I think? Yeah. Please tell me. I, this thing is going I, out of control. I think Jay Z turned against Diddy. Oh, yeah. They both... I, I I don't know all the particulars. I haven't downloaded it from the heavens yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know the why, but I'm really beginning to think that. And I've seen a couple of things. Concerning Jay Z, it's a um, you know how you play spades. They say how many books you got. You be like one right. in a possible. Well, with this, I got a one in a possible. So, oh, wow. the one book I got is you know you've heard of Jaguar, right? Right. Of course. <laughs> okay. Well, you know she was on Pierce Morgan last week. Yeah, I watched that and. She made those filthy accusations about Jay Z and Beyonce, something about putting mm -hmm. people in suitcases and leaving them in the alley and dragging unconscious women on their private jet, and that they're a nasty little couple that does nasty little things. Mm -hmm. Now, she's been talking about Jay Z for the longest, yeah. and they never responded. Mm -hmm. But they did respond, not directly to her, but they responded to Pierce Morgan because she said this crap on his platform. Now, I right. can understand for a couple of things. Number one, everything does not require a response when it comes to it, Jaguar, right? Or anybody, but right. in this case, Jaguar. Right. And so people started saying, you know, she's been saying all this stuff and Jay and Bay ain't said nothing or whatever because mm -hmm. Jaguar mm -hmm. Light ain't got no money. She broke. What are you going to waste right. your time? And plus, she's spewing all this shit on the nigga news on the internet. <laughs> but you right. get on a right. platform like Pierce Morgan. Oh, well, that platform got money that we can get. We can't get nothing from this broke Jaguar right person. Right. So they sent their lawyer after him and he came back and apologized and edited that clip. It's too late though. Well, it's already out there. Well, whatever the case is, I watched TMZ do an interview with the with his lawyer, whose name is something Spiro. That's his last right. name. And that attorney said something very interesting. 
And I'm going to paraphrase, but he said, right. Jay and Bay put their foot down because what Pierce allowed Jaguar to do was to drown out the voices of the victims. And they didn't appreciate that there are actual victims involved in an ongoing investigation. That saying, did he got victims? Did he been doing shit? Did he did it? Right, right. Now, that's the one. The possible mm -hmm. for me is this same attorney has been hired by the family of Tupac to take part in an investigation to connect the dots of Diddy having Tupac murdered. So wow. people are saying, yo, that's Jay-Z's lawyer. That looks real suspect. Yeah. And it does. But my thing is, Jay and Bay don't own Spiro. Spiro isn't an attorney. He has many clients. And, you know, you can't be like, yo, uh, attorney, that's going to look real weird if you are going to be supporting, you know, this situation and working on this case, you know, because my right. ties with Diddy, we cool. That's my, you don't have, nobody has any jurisdiction to tell an attorney who they can work with and who they can't. That's why it's a possible for me. Does look suspect as hell. But in the grand scheme of things, this man, that's why he's an attorney. He, he has a cause, a purpose, and he's to help uh, to represent people to get down to the bottom of the truth, you know, or get down to the bottom of a lie. Yes. That's why it's a possible for me. But, uh, yeah, uh Something went down with Diddy. People are saying because he sued the liquor company, he was. Yes. Um, it could be that and some other things. And it could be that, you know, I don't care how much of a, a billionaire Jay Z is, he's still a grimy nigga from Brooklyn. There you go. That does grimy shit. Mm -hmm. They grimy. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think, did Diddy do something with Jay-Z? Did Jay-Z find out that Diddy was doing Beyonce and it's it's recorded and the feds got it? I, I don't know. Wow. Wow. I got questions. And if he did do Beyonce, did he do Beyonce while they were married? Did he do Beyonce before they got married. Did he do Beyonce before he even dated Beyonce? Did he do it? Because there well, are tapes being shopped around I and heard. that he is engaged with someone who um, is more high profile than he, a household name a list celebrity. The list ain't very long. And I have a top five. And in this order Beyonce, Jay Z, Janet Jackson, Oprah, and Donald Trump. <laughs> Oprah. You gotta get a throw Gail in there. If you get Oprah, you gotta get Gail. <laughs> Gail ain't a household name. That's She's true. not That's more, true. yeah. That's just a buy one, get one free situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just joking. But you're right. So uh, they say it's Justin Bieber, but there are like three different tapes. Justin Bieber could be one of them, but I wouldn't say he's more high profile than Diddy. Right. I wouldn't he's say not. he's an A list celebrity. I wouldn't really mm -hmm. say he's a household name. No, he's not. So he's not. 
it's something and it could be beyonce hey jay-z was treat was cheating on beyonce maybe that was some get back at one time i'll that's fuck true. your friend who knows yeah. mm -hmm. i hope that's not it that would be horrible i know Terrible. all of a sudden beyonce but, turn up unalived <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but um I don't know, it's getting very, very interesting. And there are some powers that be that set Diddy up. And this liquor situation, lawsuit, I don't think that's just it. If it well, is a part that. of the situation anyway. But um, he's a dummy. And if he ever gets bail, if I was Diddy and them people gave me bail, man, please, I'd get out this country so quick. I'd be sitting next to Russell Simmons in Bali. <laughs> he got enough money to do it. And I guess that's why they won't let him out. Right. Because that's what I would do. Yep. I would never look back. He's 54. Even if they give him 10 years. That's way too long. And if they gave R. Kelly 30, they're going to give Diddy 60. Yep. Why wouldn't you upscale to another country? You'd be a fool if you don't. And he has enough friends with money and money. But he couldn't live as lavish. It's not like he's going to get all of his money, but he'll have his freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah. You rich if you got look, your look, freedom. Look, look, what good is you being a money. billionaire and you sitting behind bars like a fucking monkey? Exactly. And you got used to that life. It's not like you just he had that life for the last five years. You know what I mean? We're going on decades here. And before oh, Lord, that, rubbing elbows. Talking. And, yeah. Keep talking. Okay. But he had food. he had decades in this thing, so he's used to it. It's normalcy <laughs> for him. You see what I mean? <sighs> So, yep. that's going to be a hard pill. Look, for him to go to another country and be free, and if he had friends that had a couple million dollars that would look out for him or whatever, then I'd go with that. Heck, Ooh. I don't left the country, and I'm a blue-collar dude, retired, <laughs> and older than him. So, if I can do it, and I didn't do anything bad, well, you know, that's what it is. Unbelievable. Keep and this thing is just going to get worse even more. And uh, Cat Williams was right. You know, this is the year of truth and things being revealed. You know? I don't know. I don't know matter what best. It's happening fast. And what's the guy there? Gene Deal, the bodyguard. You know? Him. Like... He knows so much they were saying that all the while he was working with the feds for him to know so much about this situation. And he's talking so freely. Makes you wonder. You just don't know who's in your corner. Or not. Mm. And you know what? This time next week will be more and more. When does it stop? More and more people are coming out. Maybe some are frauds. But it was brought up earlier, I was listening to another podcast, and it was saying how Hugh Hefner never caught any flack for what he was doing. And he'd been doing that from way back, what, about 50s? Playboy Mansion? Just one big perpetual ditty party. And all kind of rooms and different things going on. I'm not sure about the homosexual stuff. But knowing them people, you never know. But still... It's um, we fall the hardest. We get arrogant and feel so powerful in this person's system that, you know, we don't rule. That bit of the money that he has and everything and figuring that, okay, the age that he is, if he kept going with what he was doing, he's definitely going to be a billionaire. You know, was he a couple hundred thousand dollars below that? It's an intoxicant, you know? 
Just never okay. know. Yeah. Uh, uh, You're back. Yeah. All right, hold on. <laughs> okay. You yeah. there? Mm-hmm. I'm here. Oh. I'm here. I'd say that thing hit me so hard when I had it. It would come back every couple, every few years. I had a plate of food in my hand. I was so hungry. I just let it, I just threw it down the ground. Thing hit me. I just threw it. It's like I threw it all over the floor. Mm. Child, I didn't hear what you said. You're not coming through the car no more. But um, I was turning the car off. Damn it. How did I make that happen? I don't know. Oh God. Anyway. Mm -hmm. What were you saying? So a bunch of things. Um how Hugh Hefner was doing this thing all these decades. Oh yeah. Before he died. But nothing comes out of it like that. And there were drugs. There was definitely sex and celebrities I'm sure. showing up and you know, you know the guaranteed, yeah. He was about that life. I don't know about the homosexual stuff, but I'm quite sure that they got super extra quiet rooms. That wasn't the norm. It was about the women. Rich celebrities and swing by and women, you know, giving you drinks and all this stuff. And that was a big thing. And mm -hmm. they had Playboy Mansion where it said on 58th or 59th Street off of Fifth Avenue, I remember. I was real young. I was just a Playboy Mansion. And um, there's a lot of money to get in there, which I don't know if that was like you could just buy your way into being close to the celebrities. Like, I don't know if there's different nights or a different club altogether, but I remember they had this thing where you can buy a key to the Playboy Mansion. Now, to get this key, it wasn't like a physical key where you go and put it in a door and it opens it up, but symbolically, like membership. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that so-called membership allowed you just to get next to the naked celebrities. You know what I mean? Like right. It was probably just at the business end of things. But when he did have his parties, it may not have even been there. Maybe it was there on certain nights where the general public could not come in unless you were invited or you, I guess you put up enough money or whatever. But they had the underage girls there, a lot of them come to find out, all that stuff. But Wait, I don't remember on. him. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See you later. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm getting ready mm -hmm. to eat something. It's yeah. been a real Enjoy. pleasure. Oh, as always, we got to do this more often. Build up yes, some more uh, for the matter with best following. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a powerful one, though. But enjoy your meal, sweetheart. And um, we'll talk and just know that uh, all my lights are on. And my eyes are wide open, and I'm going to be up until daybreak. I am effed up right now. Sorry. Looking for floating little white girls and people walking. <laughs> no, I'm all right. <laughs> I am a little messed up. I'm, I'm looking down the hallway, you know. <laughs> so, uh, uh. If, Don't if be I afraid. They ain't going to say nothing. They ain't going to do nothing. They never do. Well, yeah, I'm not ready for that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will talk to you. All right. Take care. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Landscurve.com. Bold, raw, and uncut. <laughs>